Now, modern Bible versions, we got to understand this. We got to understand that modern Bible versions, they are a big deal. Why? Oh, it doesn't affect doctrine. It doesn't affect doctrine. Absolutely, it does affect doctrine, you got to understand. And the doctrine it affects, you got to understand, the most important doctrine to a human being is what? Salvation, amen? amen? Yeah, it's salvation. Thank God you and I got saved from hell. So let's talk about the most important doctrine, and that's salvation. And let's look at salvation verses. If salvation verses are tampered, let me say one thing, okay? If I say to you, good works, do good works for salvation, are you going to stay in my church after that or no? You're not going to stay in my church. If some of you do, please leave, okay? I encourage you to please leave. I don't want you to stay if I say, do good works for salvation, all right? You're not a blind follower of some pastor pope, whatever he says. Oh, it's so, it's so, it's so. And every time the preacher yells and goes like this, then the audience member goes like this. You know, every time he moves <laughs> like that, up and down, up and down. See, you don't want to be like that. You have to let, you, you have to look at yourself to find the truth. All right, so modern Bible versions. It's one thing that the pastor tells you to do good works for salvation. But it's another thing if the Bible tells you, if the Bible tells you, the so-called Bible tells you that you should do good works for salvation, that it's, uh, and they give a false gospel, that should be worse, amen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't keep that Bible. Why would you keep that Bible? It's more of a hard issue. It's not because of proof. You got too much proof. All right, let's look at one. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 11. Praise the Lord, Jesus Christ came to the earth to save sinners. Amen. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, guess what? It's gone in your modern Bibles. Oh, no. Yeah, it's not important, remember, okay? This is not a salvation issue here. This is a salvation issue here. What are you talking about, Mr. White? What are you talking about, Mr. Ankerberg? What are you talking about, Dan Wallace? What are you talking about, so-and-so out there? Big deal. It's not a salvation issue. Yes, it is a salvation issue because this video is only on salvation here. Now let's look at Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23. Luke 23. You got to realize this. Luke chapter 23, verse 42. Verse 42. If you don't believe Jesus is God, that God himself was the one who saved you, you should be very careful of your salvation. Now look at this, man, the, one of the great stories, right? The thief on the cross, right? The thief on the cross is one of those great stories. Luke chapter 23, and we will read verse 42, all right? Let's see how this thief on the cross got saved. In the King James Bible, And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. See, he acknowledged this person is God Amen. who will take over the kingdom. So he humbled himself as a sinner and turned to God for his salvation. That's why Jesus says, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise, at verse 43. But in the modern versions, it takes out Lord and said unto Jesus, Hey, Jesus. <laughs> what? No, he's more than that. He's Lord. And if you don't recognize that, I had a lot of people online who asked about salvation, but they don't believe in the deity of Jesus Christ. And you know, you, if you look at the book of Acts, it says God's blood, which he purchased the church. It's important. All right, the, another thing is John chapter 9. John chapter 9. But remember, folks, this is not a big, this, the, the changes in the Bible have nothing to do with salvation. As Jimmy White said, it's a conspiracy theory, remember? Okay, th these guys are making up conspiracy theories about it. And when they hear that term conspiracy and theory together, it's like an automatic uh, card that you can play that will scare a person from listening. Rather than being objective and looking at the verse. We have John chapter 9, and we will read verses 35 through 38. All right, now look what this person did for his salvation. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on who? The Son of God. Muslims don't believe on the Son of God, do they? They only believe Jesus is a man, a great prophet, right? So 
Do you believe in the Son of God for your salvation? Amen. All right, you better. If you're not, then you better get saved. You can't be like a Muslim. Verse 36, he answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? See that? So that he can get saved, so I can believe on him. Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he what? Worshipped him. See, he got saved because he acknowledged him as the Son of God. But no, modern versions, if you look at verse 35, Jesus asked him, Dost thou believe, what, uh, do you believe on the Son of Man? Muslims can say, yes, yes, we do. Okay, you're saved, Muslim. I'm sure Mr. White, after so many Muslim debates, he said, you're saved, you're saved, you're saved, you're saved, you're saved, you're saved, because you don't believe in the Son of God, you're saved. Look, see, this is a salvation issue. This is a salvation issue, you don't understand. All right, let's also look at Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Okay, all of you know this passage, all right? All of you know this passage. We're going to look at Acts chapter 8. And we're going to look at verses 37 through 38. Acts chapter 8, verse 37 through 38. Look at that. We got more people who want the NIV more than the KJV here. See that? I mean, we're not KJV idolaters. I mean, these people, they're like sharing the NIV. You know? No, give it to me. No, give it to me. You know? We're worshipers of the KJV, you must understand. All right, now we're going to look at Acts chapter 8. And then we're going to look at verses 37 through 38. All right, what... <laughs> look at right here in this passage right here in Acts chapter 8 verse 37 to 38 verse 36 is important and as they went their way they came unto a certain water and the eunuch said see here is water what doth hinder me to be baptized see he wants to get baptized but Philip's pointing out you got to get believe on Jesus first that's salvation then you can get water baptized verse 37 modern Bibles put that in brackets that it's doubt, doubtful, or they took it out. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Modern Bibles will either put that in brackets to show that it's doubtful, or they will take it out. Verse 38, if you took out verse 37, you believe in Jesus Christ, then basically you said verse 36, you can get baptized in water. Uh -huh. And verse 38, boom, they got baptized in water and he got saved. Oh, that's a conspiracy theory. Look, it's not a theory because this happened at a Catholic convention where my father was witnessing to this Catholic and he used Acts 8, 36 and 38 to prove water baptism for salvation. And my dad says, that's right, that's a modern Bible version. It's not a KJV. And he showed him verse 37, you got to believe on Jesus for salvation. It's a conspiracy theory we must understand. We're, we're too fantastical. We made all these things up, you must understand, all right? All right, let's look at Colossians 1, 14. You all know that verse too, right? Colossians chapter 1, verse 14. So I'm just going to read ahead for time's sake. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. The blood atonement is essential for salvation. Amen? Amen. If you don't believe in it, then you're not saved. The blood is what washed away our sins. Now here's the thing, is that in Colossians 1, verse 14, through his blood, that's how we attain forgiveness. But modern Bible versions will put that in brackets that it's doubtful or they will erase it. Through his blood is cut off. Or it's in brackets. This is only salvation issue. I didn't show you all the other parts of the modern Bible versions. In the New King James Version. That is really bad. All right, let's look at 1 Peter 2, verse 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. Are you guys having fun reading the footnotes in the modern Bibles yeah. too? Yeah, the footnotes make it worse. They think footnotes yeah. can cover their tracks, mm -hmm. that they covered all bases, but footnotes actually make it worse, you got to understand, because they just gave two contradicting opinions, and you can pick which one. All right, anyways, food for thought, just food for thought, all right? 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 2. All right, do we believe salvation is done like that, it is finished, Jesus said, or do you believe it's a process that you have to grow up in? It's instantaneous, amen? amen. Get on, bow on your knees and simply say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I trust in the blood of Jesus Christ as a repentant sinner. Boom, you're done. But no, it's got to be a process because 1 Peter 2.2. 2. As newborn babes, 
desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Notice in verse 2, you're a newborn babe in Jesus Christ. You're already saved, see? And because of that, you're growing up in the milk of the word. But no, uh, uh, this is a process. They said, grow up in your salvation. Grow up in your salvation in modern Bible versions. All right, let's uh, look at other verses. We're going to look at Mark chapter 9, verse 42. Mark 9, verse 42. All faiths may be a uh, little bit different, but they're practically the same thing. As long as you believe in something, you're going to heaven. Amen? No. <laughs> okay. I interrupted you before anyone said amen like that. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> look, at, look at Mark chapter 9. <laughs> And verse 42, Mark chapter 9, verse 42. As long as you believe you're going to heaven, all faiths can go to heaven. Oh, bless God. Glory to God. Hallelujah, says a liberal. But look at right here, Mark chapter 9 and verse 42. What did the Bible say? It's, it's not just believing. And whosoever, verse 42, and whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in what? In me. Okay? You have to believe in Jesus Christ for salvation. Not just believe in, like, oh, there's Allah, Muhammad, Buddha, Confucius, Jesus is a prophet, blah, blah, blah. No, uh, in Mary, no, this is in Jesus Christ alone. That's why Jesus is the only way to heaven. But modern Bibles, what do they do? They drop in me. All right, as long as you believe, you're fine. But here's another one. Another one is the book of John. In uh, John chapter 6, verse 47, which we won't turn to. But in that verse, it says, believe on me. And guess what the modern Bibles did? They just dropped that too, or put it in brackets that it's doubtful. They just said, as long as you believe. All right. Um, look at Mark chapter 10, verse 24. Your honor, this is the evidence. One, two, out of the mouth of two witnesses shall every word be established. Oh, no, this is a conspiracy theory. Three, four, we have a witness. A Catholic actually used this verse. Oh, it's still, I don't know. Four, five, how much more? Let's look at a few more, right? Mark chapter 10, verse 24. Mark chapter 10 and verse 24. Oh, you're going to love this verse, man. Mark chapter 10 and verse 24. The Bible says, And the disciples were astonished at his words, but Jesus answereth again and saith unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of heaven? Notice those who trust in riches is hard for them to go to heaven, right? But notice, but the modern Bibles, they will say, Children, how hard is it for them to enter into the kingdom of God? What? Salvation is hard? What in the world? What in the world? That's not the case. All right, one more, one more. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 7 and verse 14. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 14. Salvation is difficult, folks. Remember that. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 14. I mean, that's what the Bible says. I mean, the Bible, right? Do you believe the Bible? Do you believe the Bible? The Bible said it's hard, so let's use it. See, you have to have a perfect Bible. To insist there is no perfect Bible, you're opening a gateway to hell. Amen. If you Hebrew and Greek scholars want to go to Hebrew and Greek, then let me say it in your language. It is a gateway to Sheol and Hades. Amen. All right, now let's look at Matthew 7, 14. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 14. Okay, your New King James Version, which is it's supposed to be the same Bible, also messes this up. Matthew 7, verse 14. The Bible says, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Right? It is a straight and narrow way, because there, there aren't many people going to salvation. But no, the modern Bibles, including New King James Version, says, it says, uh, narrow and difficult is the way. All right, folks, uh, just remember, uh, we learned a valuable lesson today.